but bar here, shoulder height. I like to grab just like bench, just a common cue, shoulder width apart. Uh, but we're gonna get under the bar, get set. So obviously this is a little low, I'm like doing a quarter squat, so I'd probably bring this up more. But I'm gonna stand up. This, the walkout for a squat is incredibly important. Stand up and control that weight. So I stand up, squeeze the glutes, it's gonna get my core engaged, it's gonna get my hips aligned, and then it should be like a step, step, and then I'm ready to squat, right? You'll see athletes all the time, they not like a, a baby deer. They'll come out and they'll be like this. And, <laughs> and that, does, that literally doesn't do anything for you in terms of the movement, right? You have to set the tone. I coach the walkout of the squat almost more than I coach the actual movement of the squat because you will not get your body ready to squat if you do not set the tone in the beginning. So here, come out, stand up, brace your core, squeeze your butt, step, step, athletes will struggle with that, but just try to get as many few steps as possible. And then again, I might be playing around with this here and figure out the perch system. Uh, we might have to bring the bench in. It's not a big deal, or go a long, long ways. Uh, but we're gonna be here, squeezing our core, I coach the butt back, knees out. This is, I almost coach this just like we coach a regular squat. So we're gonna sink our hips back, we're gonna push our knees out, and we're gonna sit on the box from here. You guys notice I have a slight lean forward. Just like when we sprint, here I'm gonna be incredibly slow, right? I wanna be extended where I'm gonna accelerate. I'm gonna have a slight lean forward. That can, it's gonna keep my hamstrings loaded. Uh, I'm gonna push my knees out, and then I'm just gonna stand up and push my knees out. So the biggest thing here is we're gonna pause on the bench. So you can just say sit down on the bench. I don't want this, and I don't want this, right? Because again, the main reason we have the pause, we want to break in the stretch shortening cycle. So we're gonna sit back, we're gonna pause, we're gonna squat up. The easiest way to tell a kid that is just squat, sit, and stand up. Making sure they're keeping some tension, because you just don't want them here, and then you don't want them to lose all the tension in the core, because they've got weight on their back, you're just asking them for a low back injury, and we don't want the run, right? Again, if you're looking at a true west side box squad, if you're looking at a true west side box squad, that's all the things you want. You want that lean, you want that rock, you want to disengage the hips. We're training middle school, high school, college athletes. I'm going to take the best training variation that's going to give you the best training economy and carry over the safe foot. Does that make sense? So what will really get butchered if Will is coaching this and they're getting into their heavy set, because athletes will do this. And they go, and their warm-up sets, they're good. And then they get their heavy sets, and they come in, and they go, oh, and they bounce. Right? You know the perch system, you know with the weight, it's totally them coming in, pause, drive. And they don't have to sit there for 10 minutes. But it's a break and stretch shortening cycle, and a drive out. Make sure you're on top of your athletes with this. When they get to a point, you got to cut them, you got to cut them. This is the expectation. Week one, I always consider that like my... Uh, Acclimation, we're getting them used to. The movements, make sure they know that is expectation. That's something we 100% have to be unified as a staff, right? Can so, I one cue before Ryan? Yep. Cool. Um, so the other thing I get a lot of athletes doing is they'll complain that their low back hurts and they're stabilizing their low back. It's a super simple cue that a lot of kids understand that I use. I always say ribs should not flare out, ribs should stay stacked over the pelvis. Just like when you're running, Ribs should always remain over top of the pelvis. If you run like this, you're already pushing yourself back. So when I'm squatting here, I come up under, I got that bar. When I'm squatting, I'm not going ribs up into the air, stabilizing low back. I'm squeezing my core tight, so you kind of see my hips go forward a little bit, and now I'm going down, staying stable, and coming right out of it. So a lot of them, again, those are to plane, and this is honestly in a lot of movements, regardless that we're doing. If your ribs are flared out here, you're not stabilizing to your core, you're stabilizing to your low back. So a lot of kids just teaching, I would say like, hey, what would you do if I was punching your stomach? They all go like this. That's a braced core. So honestly, you're just having them brace their core like they should, and I find a lot of them understand that cue of ribs shouldn't be flared out, pull the ribs to the pelvis. And they really seem to get that a lot. Um, and you'll see a lot of kids like, oh my God, my low back doesn't hurt anymore. Well, we're bracing at the core, the front, the, the anterior core, not into our low back. So definitely utilize that one a lot of kids really good.